Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Monday afternoon, August 16th. And we're looking at Window Traders' market profile of SPY, IWM, and Triple Qs. And we've been talking about some weird things happening recently, right, with the wide pox, uh, with the no volume, with the trend days down and trend days up, trend day up. Well, what happened today is, again, maybe a first that I've ever seen since I've been trading SPY for the last 10 years. And that is we gapped lower. We had lower value all day. It might have ended overlapping a low, but I'm not sure in the TPO. But lower value all day. And I go out with a trend day up with five sets of single prints. I had six and with five and a price pro. So utterly stunning some of these things that are transpiring with this price action. Talk about price leading value today. Um, volume. 55 million. We did incredibly some prints up at the all-time highs. They were printing some uh, heavy volume. However, however, the volume pop for the day before the close in print, if I was to put this in ones, was at the day's lows. They pushed and pushed and pushed in A, B, C, D. And I said to the room, I said, these are shorts pushing. I said, forget about getting to last week's low. We couldn't get to Tuesday or Wednesday's low. They were having trouble. Now, I had a good day, and I didn't do much in the afternoon, but I'm a little frustrated because I certainly didn't take advantage of the shorts I had, and I'll go over those in a minute. Let's quickly do the other indices. So triple Qs, they're the only ones that did not gap lower, yet they end up with lower value, and the only thing they have to hold on to, look at this, they made a new low, went trend down, filled it, and in one time frame of the whole day, they never pulled back, just like us. But at least we have single prints to lean on. They don't have one set of single prints. They do have a price probe, though. So they have the high, the low, and the price probe. Russell, gaps lower, comes into the gap in E, looks like they're going to fill it, never fill their gap, and they end 11 wide. And then for us, we gap lower, push down, can't get near Tuesday. We got close to Tuesdays and Wednesdays lows, never got them. They pushed continuously. So here's another question. We talk about... You know, who's selling, who's buying? Well, I'll tell you what. We knew this was short-term selling pushing here. And I said, for the most part, it was just shorts pushing. You had week longs from Friday get out, some from Thursday. But most of this, A through D, was shorts pushing it. Okay, is it possible you had long-term buyers absorbing this? There was a lot of volume done down here. They got nothing for their efforts below A or B or C. Nothing. Maybe it was long-term buying absorbing. Now, I know this isn't long-term buying. They just walk away when it starts going up and let, let the retail and the algos do the work. Fascinating recovery to do this is amazing. Um, I didn't expect it, although at this point in the game, I guess I should just expect silliness, which is what happened um, as far as my trading. So in A period, I took a short against the gap, the 445 puts. It was a size play um, when... Uh, when we got, I'm sorry, A was not the size play. A was a good trade, but was not a size one, the 445s. B was the size one, not anywhere near the low. But I'm sorry, wait, let me retrace. A was a size one. We got below the opening, came down, when it pushed back up right before the second 15-minute bar started. I said, if we push up, I want to take a size short to go test the low, and I did. Bought 100. I bought 100 of the 445 puts. Problem is, I didn't hold them as long as I should have. It was a really nice trade, but at one point I could have made 60 cents on them instead of the 15 to 20 cents I made on them. So that kind of frustrated me. Then in B period, I took a put as it started going up, a small one, and then right around when we were getting to the high, I was like, I was so tempted, and those were the 445 puts again. I was going to buy 100 of the 446, use the opening as my out. I didn't do it, and guess what? right around the second 15 minute bar and it rolled over again so even though I made money on the nice the size put in A and the smaller one I had in B I never took the bigger one in B which I should have and I should have held on longer in A on that short then in C because we were getting no tempo once we made a new low and we pushed up I took a long when it came uh, down against A's low not for a long period just a 442 call because we were getting no tempo and rode it up a bit. I should have ended my day there. Now, I didn't give back money, but it got frustrating. 
because in E period I took a short, not a big one. I was like, let's see if we're going to hold. Um, let's see if we hold the opening. Now we held the opening, but it started going against me. Got above B's high. I did it between D and B's high. Once we got a B's high, I said, forget it, I'm out. So I lost on that. Then in G period, I took a small put play. Really wasn't getting away from me. We had singles, but not big. It was only a small lot. And then what I did in I, I bought 100 of the 447 puts against the 12 wide pock from Friday. And they gave me enough time where it came down a little bit. So I took off the 15 that I was short in G for a loss. Made money pretty good uh, quickly on 60 of the size put play. And then when it started going back up, took the 40 off. I said, I'm not holding on to this. So I made money net-net on that trade from G and I, but nothing great. And then I just watched this whole grind up. Yeah, it looks pretty easy to say, you know, all you have to do is buy each time frame as long as you're one time framing up. And I hope people did it. If uh, That's great. But with lower value all day, I know we started going trend. There was no real tempo. I just watched it. And no trade is a trade also. Still green on the day, still had a good day, and tomorrow is another day. So I don't mind missing um, that move up. Because again, I told the room I was pretty neutral. Once I took off that last uh, put play um, in I, I said I'm neutral. I don't know if, or what we want to do. We ended with an outside day up. Gap lower, lower value, ends up with five sets of single prints and an outside day up. Amazing. Destinations for tomorrow. Well, right now, we have 447.11, which is today's all-time high, but we've already put in a new all-time high in N. So we will have at least two upside destinations tomorrow with those. For the downside, price probe, L's high, 446.63. Then four sets of single prints, and they're all very small. Five sets. I think ES has four. First one is 446.01, gets filled at the figure. 445.73 get filled at 66. 445.21 get filled at 27. 445.11 get filled at 444.93. And then 444.80 get filled at 75. And then we have today's low of 442.87, which is 21 cents above those other two daily lows. And then just quickly on the chart, just going to show you the daily because we never got anywhere near the weekly low. So we came into balance and then with an outside day up. I'm calling this balance still. Now, obviously, you can use a three day balance. You could use uh, Thursday's low as the bottom of it since we never got there and today's high as the top of it. If we trade inside today's range, it's still balanced. If we take out yesterday, today's uh, high tomorrow, I will go back to up in the daily. If we take out today's low tomorrow, then we can go from balance to possibly down. But right now, it's a three-day balance. Hope you had a good day trading. Enjoy your evening, and we'll speak prior to the opening.